Oh, well, hello. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Uh, this is the Dark Horse Ch Comics official Twitch channel. And uh, I'm Kara with Dark Horse. We have very special guests with us here today, Michael Walsh and Tyler Crook, who have both uh, worked on various Black Hammer series. Thank you so much, both of you, for joining us today. Um, first of all, we have, uh, so Michael worked on Black Hammer Justice League, Hammer of Justice, which is now available, collected in hardcover. Um, that just came out actually earlier this month, uh, despite the pandemic. So you can find that at comic book sh uh, shops and bookstores, both, anywhere where you would normally buy books. Um, if you need some help finding a shop that is open right now or seeing uh, what their options are for delivery or online ordering, pickup, whatever they have going on, um, we recommend comicshoplocator.com or also IndieBound.org can help you find a local bookshop near you. Um, but Black Hammer Justice League, Hammer of Justice, now available in hardcover. It's a gorgeous collection. Uh, and Michael was the primary artist on all of that. So uh, Tyler, of course, he actually did a cover for Black Hammer Justice League, but also he will be the primary artist on the upcoming Colonel Weird Cosmogog series which we're really excited about. And I wish I could tell you a release date, but I can't just yet because we are still awaiting updates on the front of comics printers and distribution. However, it is still planned to go into print. So stay tuned. We will give you an update on the release dates as soon as we can. We'll announce that uh, probably here on Twitch as well as on our website and our usual social media channels. Um, so watch for that. Uh, just a quick couple more announcements before we get into it. Um, so Tyler and Michael are going to be drawing as we kind of chat today. And you are also invited to ask questions in the chat. So please feel free to start asking questions about Black Hammer now in the chat if you like. Our moderators will be looking at that and we'll get to those as we continue. And finally, we'll be doing a giveaway where you can win a copy of Black Hammer Justice League Hammer of Justice hardcover. It's a gorgeous collection with lots of sketchbook material and those single issue covers, like I mentioned, by none other than Tyler and so many other great artists. Um, and you can also win a copy of the Black Hammer Library Edition Volume 1. The way to enter is once and only once in the chat, use the hashtag symbol or pound symbol, and the keyword is Gail's transformation word, Zafram. That's Z-A-F R A M and use the hashtag symbol and do that once and only once. We'll draw a winner from the chat near the end of the broadcast. Other than that, I think we're ready to get to it. Um, Michael, Tyler, thank you again for joining us. Do you mind if we start by drawing Colonel Weird? Let's not at all. <laughs> so <clears throat> what we were thinking is, uh, so Michael and Tyler are going to show you uh, which character we've selected in their own respective styles as we go. And I'm looking forward to seeing the differences. Uh, and then we'll move on to a few other characters that we know and love from the Black Hammer universe. A question for you both. I'll let you get started, though. You know, I don't want to distract you too much. Um, as you are drawing and think about this for a second, were you fans of Black Hammer before you worked on this series, or did you discover it when you were approached to draw your respective books? Um, I basically discovered it when uh, my the editor, Daniel Shaban, asked me um, if I would be interested in doing it. I, I hadn't read, like I was definitely aware of it, but I hadn't read any of it before then. Um, in general, I'm kind of suspicious of... Um, of uh like superhero deconstruction kinds of stories and so um i wasn't sure if i wanted to uh be a part of that but then you know what i was like you know once i started reading it and i saw um how jeff lemire was handling it and he's got such a great um great way of dealing with humanity and it really comes out in the series in a nice way uh, so that's that's why I ended up being a uh, being excited to work on it. Uh, yeah, for me, I was uh, 
I, I kind of pick up mostly everything that Jeff does. He, he's a friend of mine and I've known him in the kind of as a, a local Canadian comic book creator for a long time. And I've been a fan of his work for even longer than I've known him. Um, so I kind of do, yeah, I check out everything that Jeff does. And, uh, and I was already, I was already up to date on the project on, uh, on Black Hammer when I was asked to draw the Black Hammer Justice League book. So it was, it was a really exciting prospect for me as a fan of the book. That's, that's a great point, actually. Uh, I noticed that on Hammer of Justice, it seemed like there were quite a few Canadian artists. Was that something that you and Jeff talked about or something that you wanted to do for that book? No, I think it just kind of worked out that way. I mean, like the, the core... The core Hammer of Justice team uh, was just me and Jeff because I was coloring myself and then uh, Nate Picos was lettering it. Um, but for I, for all the variant covers, I know Jeff just got, was picking out artists that he enjoyed and, and uh, I'm sure just taking suggestions from Daniel as well, the editor. Yeah. I mean, the Black Hammer universe is so diverse now and has included so many fantastic artists. Of course, originally created by Jeff, Lemire and also Dean Ormston. Um, if those of you who are at home, if you've been following along on social media, we've been celebrating Black Hammer all week, actually, and well, of course, always celebrate Black Hammer, but we decided to kind of focus mm -hmm. on it this week. Um, so we've been sharing a lot of Dean's amazing process art as well. So definitely look for that on the Dark Horse uh, social channels. He's given us all kinds of cover art process as well as interiors, and it's just amazing to see the progress from roughs to pencils to inks to uh, where I can. We've also been sharing the final pages, which for the first couple of volumes of Black Hammer, it was um, <clears throat> Dave Stewart who was coloring those. Um, and we also had Todd Klein letter the first. Oh, I was so hoping there would be some pets on the stream. <laughs> you can thank my door. cat. She has opinions about <laughs> comics. <laughs> what is your cat's name? Uh, her name is The Sibby, which well, is a Homestar Runner joke <laughs> from back when we got her. She is she is more than welcome on the stream, so far as I am concerned. <laughs> yeah, she really doesn't care if she's welcome or not, to be honest. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's true. I'm, one of my cats is actually sitting next to me right now, and I... He may or may not. He'll probably butt in at some point. We'll see. Well, uh, what about Black Hammer makes it a compelling universe to explore as an artist? Uh, I think that the way that the characters are referential to uh, characters like uh, Adam Strange or Martian Manhunter, but then they still have their own uh, flavor and, and personality traits and stuff makes it kind of fun to play with what makes them similar and what makes them different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a really good point. I think that um, it's really easy to sort of look at these guys and be like, oh, this guy is that guy because they are so referential to like uh, sort of legacy characters. But um, at the same time, just the way Jeff writes, it's like these guys are all have unique things that they're dealing with. Um, and it always ends up being an, an interesting, I think, take on on the problem. Like uh, with Colonel Weird in particular, he's got that that thing where he, because he's like a combo of like, I don't even know how many guys. <laughs> he's like <laughs> kind of like Doctor Strange, but he's kind of like um, Buck Rogers, but he's, yeah, I don't know. It's like, but then he's also like got that thing where he's haunted by seeing all possible timelines at once. I think uh, I think Colonel Strange is actually my favorite to draw of the group. He just, uh, I love that he's always kind of phasing in and out of reality, and he's always got this completely bewildered look on his face. Yeah. <laughs> He's definitely become something of a fan favorite character. Um, do you think that is, the, is, is there any particular reason behind that, I guess? I mean, I enjoy him too. I don't know. That's a good question. Like, I wonder if he just like um, fits the zeitgeist right now where everyone is sort of like, 
perplexed at our current timeline. <laughs> <laughs> Michael, you definitely hit it on the head for me, I think. That that constant bewilderment, you, you can just see it in his face at all times. <laughs> yeah, like, this dude's seen too much. And I love that uh, at, at times um, in the, the Black Hammer mythology we've gotten to see what he was like when he was younger and he was he was definitely more of that uh kind of flash gordon like dapper nice hair kind of guy and he's just so different now that i love getting to see both both versions of him and can you since we are watching you draw do you mind telling us a bit about the tools that you're using today uh sure tyler do you want to go first um, sure. Um, I started penciling with my good old handy Draftmatic. It was my favorite uh, mechanical pencil. It's nice and heavy, which um, it's sort of ironically, like the heavier the pencil or pen, the easier it is on my hand. Because um, I'm not having to grip it so tight. It can just hold, sort of stay in my hand by it with its own weight. And then my brush I'm using is this Rosemary and Company Kalinsky Sable. It's a size one, series 22. And then I'm inking with FW ink, which is my favorite um, ink. It's acrylic. It's very, very black. Um, I use it because uh, it's it dries completely waterproof, so I can watercolor right over the top of it, um, which is very handy with the way I work. And then I don't know if I'll have time to do watercolor, but I got my palette sitting right here for in case we're going to, if I have time to do color. Mm. I think we can, we can probably spend some extra time on the kernel if uh, you want to do some color. I yeah, love watercolor. Like, water looks like Tyler's way ahead of me anyway, so got <laughs> some color on there, man. <laughs> um, for me, I penciled, I usually just use a mechanical pencil, but uh, most of the time when I'm working on interior stuff, I'm uh, penciling digitally and printing that out onto the paper. Um, but when I'm working traditionally, I just usually, usually use kind of a bigger mechanical pencil. This one's a Stedler 9mm uh, with uh, kind of a fatter piece of uh, lead in it. And then um, for my line work, I've been using uh, an Ackerman holder with a G-Pen nib. So the holder will feed ink that I fill myself into uh, a pen nib, uh, like a crow quill. Um, and it's like I've got a really nice thin line, but if you push hard and you pull down, it'll be wider as well. So there's a lot you can do with it. Uh, and so I'll usually go back and forth between a pen nib and a brush. Um, and I usually use Winsor Newton uh, Series 7 uh, size 3 or size 2, depending on what I have, I prefer a size three, but my size three is dead right now. So I'm using a size two. <laughs> are these, uh, tools that you would normally use, uh, when you're actually working on pages for the comics or do you use other tools when you're actually doing your professional work? Uh, this is my, my real setup. Well, I guess I do. I also, when I, for my interior pages, I pencil digitally. I just do that on my iPad, um, but I still ink and color everything with the stuff. What program do you use to pencil on your iPad? Uh, Clip Studio Paint. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, that's the that's such a good drawing program. I can't even like, I don't even enjoy using Procreate like a lot of people do, just because I think Clip Studio is so much has a better brush engine. At least we're doing yeah, pencils. Yeah, uh, 100%. Yeah, it does. I agree. Um, I mostly just pencil on my on Photoshop on my computer, but uh, if I'm traveling, I'll definitely take to the iPad. I just like having the huge Cintiq screen. I feel like the iPad's kind of small. It is very small. I would be so happy if Apple made a 32-inch iPad. <laughs> that would be like the imagine? perfect device. Yeah, I, man, I really need to get a Cintiq, though, because I would love to be working on something that's like 24 inches or... or yeah, big. I think mine's I think mine's 22, and it's it's great. I don't think I'll... It, like, having that at the ready at home, it's, it's hard for me to justify working on the iPad at home. Yeah. 
The nice thing about my iPad is that I can just sit with it on my drafting table, which is mm-hmm. where I like to draw anyway. Um, and it, it's very ergonomic in that respect. Yeah, for those who are watching at home, if you do not follow Tyler, I recommend you do because he shares process videos frequently, um, which we will also share on Dark Horse whenever we can. But yeah, Tyler's kind of a master of this process sharing of his watercolors, especially on um, other books like Harrow County, too, and Manor Black. Yeah, you can. I have a YouTube channel. Yeah, uh, you want to tell us? Tyler Crook, you can find it on there. Perfect. As we continue to look at Colonel Weird, um, I want to just give a little backstory for those at home. Probably most of you are already Black Hammer fans. Um, However, if you haven't checked Black Hammer out yet, Obviously, we recommend it highly. There are many books. It's easy to find a place to start. Really, you could start anywhere, I think. But we do have a recommended reading order. Um, we've shared that online recently as well. It's on our website, darkhorse.com, <clears throat> as well as on our social media. And obviously, you can start with volume one, uh, which is also called Secret Origins. Um, there are a trade paperback and also a library edition available now. The library editions just collect a couple volumes in one at a nice oversized um, hardcover format where you get usually an extra sketchbook section as well. So you can see things like Michael and Tyler are doing now, sort of the process behind. Um, And Black Hammer is, of course, originally created by Jeff Lemire and Dean Ormston. And they've now worked with many other artists like these two on different books in this series. Uh, We have completed the main storyline for now. And so a lot of the recent books are more in-depth explorations of specific characters, or in the case of Black Hammer Justice League, obviously that's a crossover, where we saw the crew from the Black Hammer farm trade places with the Justice League. And also I think that created some kind of interesting team ups between the characters. Uh, Tyler, Michael, did you, I know, in your case, Teller, it was mostly a cover that you got to work on, but were there any matchups in that book that you especially enjoyed between the characters? Um, that's a good question. Mm-hmm. I actually, I think that that is the only Black Hammer thing I haven't read all the way through, if I'm being honest. We should get you a copy. But, yeah, I think I, I, I have, uh, well, I have digital copies of them all. But yeah, no, I, I think that's the only thing. You know, the um, the the group, the uh, what's her name, Madam uh, Dragonfly, and uh, and Batman was the the power up that I wanted to see the most. <laughs> yeah, I loved your cover with the raven in there too. Or is it a crow? Correct my Corbett. Uh, same difference. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's a fantastic cover. I think that's issue four. Yeah. How about you, Michael? Any um, favorite matches? I'm trying to think back of uh, what I had the most fun drawing. Um, I actually really liked drawing Zatanna and Golden Gale a lot together. They were fun. Uh, and then the Spectre shows up, and that was a really great scene to draw. Um, I guess those are a little bit many spoilers for the book <laughs> but uh yeah and i mean i loved drawing batman and uh and cyborg with walkie talkie that was funny um but yeah there's there was just uh, like i would i would say kind of the way that the villain interacts with um with the black ha- hammer characters but uh i can't really spoil who the villain is so i can't even talk about that <laughs> fair enough Oh, you know what? No, it was it was probably Green Lantern and um, and Colonel Weird because I got to draw a lot of space stuff, which is always really fun. Yeah, we've have you two looked at uh, Doctor Andromeda also in the Black Hammer verse. Doctor Andromeda? No, I haven't seen that one yet. 
it's it's really beautiful. The art on that book, so all Black Hammer books are, of course, written by Jeff Lemire. Um, the art, though, for Dr. Andromeda is by Max Fiumara. And as you might imagine from the title, uh, that has so many great space exploration scenes. Um, and Max's style is just so detailed. And it really harkens back to that kind of 1940s era superhero style. Just a beautiful book. Very yeah, sad. He's, he's amazing. He's such a great artist. Yeah. Yeah. But hopefully we'll work with him some more. I'm not sure what's next. The ever expanding Black Hammer universe. Uh, we do have Barbalian coming up too. So a side series um, with mostly Canadian artists on that one, actually. Uh, go figure. Uh, that will be coming up soon. That's also on our website, darkhorse.com. Um that that looks beautiful too. Yes, I'm very excited for that. Barbalian, we haven't gotten to explore him as much yet. I'm totally spacing on the name of the artist. Is that the one that uh, Gabriel Walter is drawing? Yeah. 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 He's he's so good. And Kate Bromball is helping uh, write that one. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Yeah, that one's going to be the next upcoming miniseries. We also have uh, Skull Digger and Skeleton Boy going on right now with uh, Tonsi on the art for that. And that's a very gritty kind of Frank Miller inspired side series. Um, very Dark Knight influenced, although Tonsi has said he deliberately isn't trying to copy that, you know, style. <laughs> but yeah, that's... Yeah, that's cool. That book is turning out beautiful, too. I'm really enjoying that one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's been very well received so far. For anybody watching at home, actually, the first issue of that is free right now on Dark Horse Digital, as well as on Comixology and other platforms. And actually, that's part of our whole overall uh, free issue number ones. Every Black Hammer miniseries is 50% um, off right now on Dark Horse Digital. And again, on other platforms, too. And every issue, number one, is free. So you can try it out, see what you think. And if you like the the story behind it, then you can get the rest for 50% off. Or, of course, contact your local comic shop if they are able to do delivery right now. And so as you kind of wrap up, I mean, don't let me rush you. Please continue going. But we were thinking that the next character that might make sense after the Colonel is, of course, Talkie Walkie. Works for me. Yeah. Do you, on that note, do the two of you, we've kind of talked about your favorites a little bit. Um, besides your favorite characters or types of scenes to draw in the Black Hammer universe, do you have a least favorite? Is there something that is just kind of tedious? Hmm. Uh, <laughs> that's a tough question, because, like, I feel like as a comic book artist, your job is always to, like, find a way to enjoy drawing the most tedious stuff possible. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know sometimes people will say, you know, they hate drawing bicycles or something like that. Yeah, luckily there's no Captain Bicycle in the Black Hammer. I mean, never say never. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess I had to draw some scenes with a lot of rubble recently, and that was very time consuming. Fair enough. I imagine that something you have to draw repeatedly might get a bit old, especially if it's just background. Yeah, and it's like the thing with drawing, like, you know, that like every Black Hammer story comes back to um, anti-God, like ravaging the city. And it's like that, those scenes are, can be very time consuming. Mm. Yeah. Well, you're starting uh, to get some... Oh, go ahead, please. I, I did kind of find uh, talkie-walkie or walkie-talkie kind of difficult to get a handle on at first because all the artists that had drawn him had drawn him very, very differently, like just the way the mechanics of the robot worked. Mm -hmm. um, so I just kind of like 
decided to go as close to Dean's depiction as possible and then kind of do my own thing. Yeah, that's fair enough. We, I have seen so many different styles. Um, we had James Stoko actually do a variant cover for, uh, I think it was San Diego Comic-Con a couple years ago, and that has Takiwaki with some pigs. I don't know okay. if you that. <laughs> no. <laughs> but that is worth a look in Stoko style. So there's another version of the robot for you. Um, Tyler, here's here's a question from chat, very specific to Cosmogog. Um, for the cover of issue number one, they say, I have to ask, is that tuft of hair on the child version of Randall Weird a nod to Tintin? Um, not intentionally. Um, <laughs> That is really inspired by, um, uh, oh man, whenever I do interviews like this, I forget everybody's name. Um, <laughs> the, the Spanish artist who did a lot of Cosmogog stuff in some of the original runs, or oh, not right. Cosmogog, the, he did the a lot of Colonel Weird stories. Um, the David Ruben? Ruben? What's yeah, that? David did uh, the yeah, Sherlock Frankenstein. Like the way he drew um, sort of the astronaut era of Colonel Weird. Um, he had a uh, little plucky bangs that went up like that. So that was that was the inspiration for that was to sort of do a, a kid's version of that. Um, yeah, way more than way more than Tintin. You know, I. Oddly, I might be the only cartoonist in the on the planet who hasn't read. Like, I think I've read one Tintin book in my life. Maybe we'll have to ask David the ultimate influence for that style of the character. Yeah, it's quite possible that he read a lot of Tintin. We also have a question for Michael, which this is actually not on Black Hammer, but I think it's an interesting question nonetheless. Um, how did you decide what to draw for your cover of Something is Killing the Children, number four? Oh, um, I don't, I'm trying to remember why I conceptualized that image or how. I think I just liked the idea of a giant monster puking up the hands, the bloody hands of all the the children that he's eaten. <laughs> that sounds so dark, but uh, I just find that name, the title of that book, Something is Killing the Children, so evocative. It's such an interesting title to me. And so I tried to make an image that was kind of uh, pulled a little bit of that uh, from the title. Uh, but that's a great book. I definitely recommend uh, anybody read that that hasn't had a chance to. We have uh, one more for Tyler already, too, um, also about Cosmogog. Did you have the chance to completely uh, create... <laughs> <laughs> what we have are the you even? That's very important to hear. <laughs> I'm sorry, were you saying something? <laughs> um, did you or your cat get to name or design or have any influence over those things in the characters in Cosmogog? Um, yeah, I got to design a couple, um, so in Cosmogog, we sort of do a lot of, um, Colonel Weird's backstory. So the, um, the, there were eras of Colonel Weird's life that hadn't ever been, like, appeared in any of the Black Hammer books. So I got to design, like, um, a young, uh, Colonel Weird when he was, like, you know, about, 10 or 11 years old, and then um, I got to design him in the 70s when he w sort of went through his hippie period. Yes. Which is I very exciting. I can't wait for people to see that. I, I, um, I'm having a lot of fun with that part. I do love a good, like, disco version of our regular characters. That's a fun thing we get to see with Hellboy, for example, because we'll... <laughs> We go back to, you know, Hellboy and the BPRD from the 1940s onward. And so we've gotten like the 50s. And we're starting, I think there's going to be some more that gets a little more disco. We get, we get to see some fun little pinups in some of the one shots too, like in um, Krampus Knocked a couple years ago. I love a good disco hero. 
I hope this isn't a spoiler, but Colonel Weird is a little less disco and a little more like hippie. That's yeah. that's I'm, sort of the scene he fell in with. Yeah, I mean, you can kind of tell. I I think he looks a bit like a hippie, and <laughs> even even when we first meet him on the farm. I think I'm going to call this Colonel Weird done. Yeah, I'll be I'll be done with mine too. We can move on. It looks awesome. Yours looks awesome. I love I love the differences. Yeah, Michael's is way more ambitious. I'm like I'll do from sort of the shoulders up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> A portrait. Yes. And the watercolors are beautiful. Yeah, I should show this off. People might enjoy this. This was my, um, before I started the series, I've made this little Colonel Weird maquette. Oh, that's so cool. Uh, so you have a 3D printer at home? Yes, I have a, a little thing. It's called an Elegoo Mars. And it's really inexpensive, but a really nice little resin printer to can print. It can print a little bit bigger than this, but it has to print pretty small. Do you use That's them awesome. for reference quite a bit then? Um, I don't use it as often as I thought I would, but I definitely do use it. Um, one of the reasons I don't use it as much is because when I made the 3D model, he ended up looking a little more um, uh, put together than I would have liked. Like, <laughs> in, When I need to draw him in the comic, he's always a little bit more like frazzled than he looks in this. Although he does look pretty frazzled. He looks, he looks a little concerned, I think. Yeah. He's, like, he's just a little too dashing, I think. <laughs> Caught in, in a rare lucid moment, maybe. <laughs> I mean, with that, you could almost print your own little uh, miniatures for role-playing or tabletop games. Yeah, that'd be fun. I was working for a little while on a Harrow County figure, trying to do an action figure. So this is Emmy from Harrow County. Oh, cool. But this is just like early prototype working on her. I'm still still working on it. It's pretty time consuming. Yeah. I can only imagine. I have not I have not played with 3D printing at all. It seems it's, like it's becoming more of a tool though for many artists that we work with. Yeah, it's getting a lot easier to do, that's for sure. And so next, I mean we were talking about talkie walkie, but uh, if you would rather, we can we can also move on to other characters. But if we're, if we're good with talkie, yeah, talkie is fine with me. Makes sense to follow the colonel, of course. Hopefully, they'll get along this time. <laughs> they've had their moments. They've had they've had some falling outs in the comics. Um, again, for anybody who hasn't been reading Black Hammer as of yet, um, it's kind of a love letter from Jeff Lemire to comics of eras past. And uh, each character is something of an amalgam of a few different characters or archetypes of characters that you would recognize from different eras of comics. And they absolutely become characters of their own and develop lives and personalities of their own. But you'll you'll certainly recognize um, some of your favorites or maybe least favorite uh, stereotypes kind of blended together in these in these characters and um, in Black Hammer Justice League especially uh, since we're kind of focusing on that here today um, it, I think that adds another interesting element where these archetypal hero, uh, heroes get to meet a team of actual archetypal heroes and uh, kind of cross over with their universe. So, Michael, uh, when you started working on that book, actually, had you done much work for DC previously? Had you drawn those characters before? No, I was I was primarily working with Marvel for, um, I don't know, almost about five years at that point. And um, I had done a little bit of stuff for, for DC, but uh, it actually ended up not coming out. I had drawn a bit of Batman stuff that didn't end up coming out um, because... Plans change sometimes. Um, but yeah, so that was actually the first time I was able to tackle a lot of those characters. Um, so it was there's a lot of characters to learn how to draw because there was the entire Justice League 
and the entire Black Hammer universe of characters, plus a few new characters that we were creating on our own. Um, so I was like, every single issue, I had to learn a bunch of stuff, which is good and and uh, and daunting at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. It's a lot to take on at once. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, team books seem like so much work, and that's like a double team book. Yeah. They, there's so much more work than uh, single character books, but I mean, yeah, yeah, they are. There are a lot of work. <laughs> I don't even know how to, how to sugarcoat that. <laughs> yeah, it's remarkable how often, if you if you have a team book that like a a scene will have, you know, four or five very specific characters in it all talking about something versus, and that is it's. It's remarkable how much more work that can be. Mm -hmm. Tyler, have you... Oh, go ahead, please, Michael. Uh, no, that's okay. You can, you can go on. <laughs> move on. Hard with our uh, video calls. We can't talk over one another, of course. Mm -hmm. um, have you done much in the DC universe yourself, Tyler? Or I know you said that was the first time you'd drawn Batman for that cover. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I haven't. I've done a little bit. I've done a few things for them that um, also didn't ever come out. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and I've yeah, no, I haven't. And none of it has been like um, like Batman type stuff. It was um, some Vertigo uh, stuff. Ah. And so, if the Black Hammer characters were to cross over with any other universes or characters. Is there anything that you would especially like to see? Whether or not you had to draw it, of course. Hmm. That's a difficult one. So many so yeah. many possibilities. You know what would be cool if we're sticking within the Dark Horse universe would be to see Black Hammer cross over with Hellboy. Yeah. That would be that would fun. Be pretty fun. Like a Abraham Slam and Hellboy teaming up in the 60s or something. <laughs> I'm actually surprised we haven't really talked about that more. Hmm. <laughs> well, now I that I planned nothing. the idea. <laughs> I can promise nothing, but uh, I do. I, I like that idea a lot. That would maybe become another like team, double team up, I guess, because you could have the whole BPRD as well as the whole... Black yeah, Hammer. that's true. That's true. Got like Kate Corrigan in there, and I don't know how. Like she and Gail might get into a, a fight. I don't know. <laughs> I love Gail yeah. uh, personally. She is one of my favorite characters. Uh, do you guys have any other particular favorites on the Black Hammer squad? Or also the villains are pretty interesting. I really like Barbalian a lot. Um, and I'm really excited for that new book to see what, uh, to get a little bit more history on him. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's, that's, my, that's my cat's favorite character. <laughs> it's funny because one of my cats is listening to that and is becoming quite alarmed. <laughs> my, my cat has become a screamer in recent years and it got so bad that the, one of the neighbor cats would come to our front door and start crying like she would be in here screaming her head off and the neighbor cat would be crying to be like so whatever you're doing to that poor cat stop stop <laughs> i think that may be what's happening here she looks very concerned <laughs> um i think m my favorite would be dragonfly um, but i you know i tend to go towards the the more horror types of stuff mm -hmm. um, but i think she's a really cool character i like her yeah. whole backstory and everything and i love drawing um anti-god too he's um i get very excited when i have some some scene where i get to show him like hovering over the city or whatever I have a page sitting right here, actually, that is from the first issue. This is all stuff that they've made 
they've shown this, but here's like the original page for anti god showing up. Yes. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> I love the lightning bolts. Yeah. That is that yeah. is so cool. Thank when you for he shows up, nothing is nice. <laughs> Uh, we have another question from Michael from the chat, actually. Um, your Batman in Black Hammer Justice League uses a symbol similar to the Rebirth Batman run. Uh, was there anything behind that choice in particular? Uh, that was, uh, so when we started that series, um, it was actually kind of a around that time. And they were still using that costume uh, when that series was going into, into I don't know, I guess you would say pre-production. Um, so that was kind of what they requested us to use. Um, hmm. so I didn't really, yeah, I didn't really pick Batman's, uh, costume for the book or I, I probably would have went with something a little bit more classic to be honest. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm, I'm happy with the way that I got to draw him. Did you have, um, other similar costume requirements to follow for some of the other DC characters? Yeah, I think I think they sent style guides for all of the DC characters. They wanted them drawn a specific way. Um, I think that my style of art is a lot more simplified than the house style at DC. So um, I took a lot of liberties with the costumes and I left out a lot of the finicky details um, in them because that's just that's just the way I draw. I don't I don't want to get hung up on unnecessary stuff, especially with superhero costumes um so so they were definitely based on designs that were sent to us but then i tried to do my own thing at the same time so not adding you know 90 unnecessary pouches to everybody's costumes yeah pretty much exactly yeah <laughs> like i don't you, i don't feel like you need to need, see the seams in in uh at the armpit of a superhero costume <laughs> i i think that's entirely fair <laughs> personally <laughs> that, i that's so funny like i totally agree with you except that i love drawing seams on stuff <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's not the greatest example because i do i do actually love drawing that like this the shoulder seam is i feel like i feel like when you draw seams sometimes they um they help with foreshortening and stuff like that yeah for sure Look, look for more seams now. I'm going to look for more seams in, like, Harrow County and see if I can find any now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, even, like, the Colonel Weird that I just did, I had to include, like, the little seam on his shoulder uh, here. Yeah. I see what you mean. That does, that does add, you know, some depth and kind of realism to the... Oh, yeah, I just pulled up one of my copies of Harrow County and... Here, here's Emmy in a jacket with some nice wrinkles. She probably has like the stitching on her collar. You can probably mm -hmm. see. Yep, jacket and uh, sweater looks like. There's a lot of stuff like that where I feel like if you can show the construction of a thing a little bit like that, it makes it feel more real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take much, but just that little bit of like. This is a thing that was made as opposed to just a thing that magically exists. Right. Like a spandex body sock. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those uh, always well, end up have, being like alien beings. <laughs> uh, I might I might be a little biased uh, working for a publisher that does a lot more like dark horror rather than clean superhero types, but which is, I think, a fun thing about the style of, and, and there are many styles, of course, each of you bring your own style to each of these Black Hammer books, but uh, they are so different and unique and kind of, you know, at times dark, um, starting with Dean's art on the original Black Hammer series. I think that's kind of one of the nice things about working on the characters is that because they're still pretty new, there hasn't been too many, uh, too many takes on them. So everyone who's who's able to work on them right now is kind of giving something really fresh and bringing something really new to the characters. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel like there's a lot of um, 
stuff in the Black Hammer world that would in a lot of other places would be dark and gritty, but in the Black Hammer universe is more like um, just a little bit closer to realism. It's like earthy realism rather than grim realism, if that makes any kind of sense. Yeah, I think earthy is a great word to describe the Black Hammer universe. And it does vary. I mean, in Quantum Age, we're far in the future, so we have a very futuristic spaceship kind of setting for a lot of things. But even then, the colors um, by Wilfredo Tor, uh, actually, he did the art. I'm actually blanking on the colorist. Um, but that series still has that kind of earthy, down to earth, I guess, feel, I think. Yeah. Yeah, even that has a lot of um, street level action. Right. And and I love Wilfredo's work. His stuff, that book was really beautiful. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that one. I look forward to um, when we get to the eventual collection of, you know, recollection of that. That will be fun to talk about again and share more art from that. I think I felt like that series was well received, but I just I guess I just didn't see as many people talking about it as I have some of the others. So it'll be fun to revisit. Um, related odd question, but will the Bla- will the Hammer of Justice miniseries be going to library edition eventually? Um, you know, I'm actually not sure, and I can't really say right now. But um, if and when we can announce, we'll definitely put that out there. Um, the next library edition, of course, is actually the World of Black Hammer, which means that collects the first couple of side series. So that's Dr. Andromeda and Sherlock Frankenstein, both of which have much longer titles that um, it's like a Sufjan Stevens album. Um, <laughs> but <laughs> So yes, I would expect the library editions to continue to collect. Um, it being a crossover with DC is a good point, but I think, um, you know, it, it, this one is our crossover. So I think we may be able to collect it. We will see. Um, another one from the chat. Do you both have any favorite variant covers um, for the Black Hammer books just as a whole by any other artists? Hmm. That's There's a good one. question. I haven't seen a lot of them. I really liked the uh, Andrew Robinson one um, from Black Hammer Justice League of the stuff that I worked on. That one was really nice. Uh, and the Matteo Scalera one was really, really great as well. You know, um, uh, Evan Dorkin did a variant cover for the Cosmogog book that I really liked. Yes, that's right. I, that is up on our website right now, I think, if people want to go look for that. Yeah, that one has like a very um, like underground comic booky rock and rolly feel to it i think that i liked a lot yeah i love i love his style he actually was saying he hadn't done any variant covers at all until fairly recently really which yeah it surprised me too yeah but that's really cool i'm glad that he did at least one for uh the black hammer verse It should be should be soon that we can announce some updated release dates. Um, and when we do, we will definitely signal boost that. Um, oh, I just want to know. Oh, go ahead, please. I'm sorry, I'm looking through. Uh, I'm looking through the hardcover right now from from Black Hammer Justice League, and those are my two favorite variant covers. And I totally forgot about them. Uh, mm-hmm. The um, Julian Totino Tedesco one and the Ian Bertram one. Those were those were probably. Yes. I love both of their work. <laughs> you know who they need to get to do one is uh, Fred Hembeck should do one. Uh, we'll see if... That'd be amazing. See if Dan is uh, watching or listening. <laughs> <laughs> we'll remind him later. I actually saw him briefly earlier. We are all, of course, working from home right now, but I had to run by the office <clears throat> to pick a few things up and I guess he did too, and we saw each other through glass anyway. <laughs> <laughs> and 
Interesting, interesting times working from home. Has it changed either of your usual working styles or do you normally kind of work from home as it is? Yeah, I normally work from home and uh, luckily right now I was working on, I'm working on two different creator owned projects. So I'm kind of able to just continue working on them as, as I would anyways. Um, it doesn't really alter the publishing schedule for them. Um, so I was kind of, I was kind of lucky that way. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Yeah, I, I also work from home. So like, I was joking with a friend that it's like nothing in my life has really changed, except that there's like an invisible 12 inch spike in the back of my brain all day long while I'm trying to work. <laughs> yeah, there's kind of this um, indescribable creeping dread that, <laughs> but it's like, it's not really you know, everything that's happening isn't affecting me, but I can't really stop thinking about it. It's still there in my mind. Yeah. Well, it's definitely affecting a lot of people. Yes, of course. And I think that's what's what's so upsetting, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're very glad that you are able to join us for things like this so that, you know, we can still connect with people at home. I hope everybody watching is enjoying seeing kind of the process behind um, the art that goes into our comics and getting to hear from the creators and getting at least a little bit of a human connection too from these live streams that we're doing. Thank you again, Michael and Tyler, both for, for doing this with us today. My Thanks pleasure. For us. Yeah. I know, uh, Tyler, you have also been doing some charity work lately. Um, do you want to talk about that a little bit? Um, yeah, I started a um, YouTube channel called uh, Drawn to the Shop. And what I'm doing is uh, once a week, well, I might be switching that to every other week, but right now it's once a week. I'm doing an interview with a comic shop proprietor and um, doing a commission for them. So I'm live streaming doing a drawing and then um as soon as i'm done i mail the drawing off to the comic shop and uh if you spend 100 bucks at the comic shop um, that week then you are entered to win the drawing um yeah and it's been really fun it's definitely got me in contact with a lot of amazing comic shops um it's one of those things like this whole industry is driven um by love you know like nobody nobody makes comics because they intend to make a bunch of money off of it <laughs> um so like talking to comic shop owners who are sort of on the front lines of not doing it for money um it's really i don't know it's just it's fun to talk to people who love comics as much as i do and to hear about the ways that they uh you know they're working to keep comics the keep the comics flowing yeah, people have been getting really creative. I've seen a lot of different stores doing all kinds of different uh, delivery options and packages and uh, even just online content. You know, here are our recommendations for people. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of the shops I've talked to, they've gone from having a retail space and they've like in the course of a month turned it into a shipping and warehouse space. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like they're getting comics to people via the mail and driving them around town and dropping them off and doing curbside pickup. There's definitely a lot of ways to get comics still, even um, even though it seems like a lot of places are completely closed. Yeah, yeah. so um, this Sunday I'm talking to uh, the folks at Four Color Fantasies. Um, yeah, at 4 p.m. Eastern. You can tune in on Sunday. The and that's uh, <laughs> drawn to the shop, right? Correct. Uh, and uh, actually, you are both pretty active on social media yourselves, right? Um, would you mind telling people where they can find you if they would like to follow you on your own social? Uh, yeah, my uh, my Instagram and my Twitter are both uh, Mr. underscore Walsh, and Mr. is spelled out in full, like M I S T E. R underscore Walsh. Um, I would have just made it my name, but Michael Walsh is probably one of the most common names in the world. There are <laughs> literally millions of us. That is so funny. I 
my name is not that common, and yet Tyler Crook was taken in so many places. That's exactly why I'm Mr. Tyler Crook on everything. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on Twitter, I'm Mr. Like M R Tyler Crook, and on Instagram, I'm Mr. M I S T E R Tyler Crook. That one. Uh, well, easy to remember. There you go. Yeah. I, lo- I do. I've been enjoying that coincidence, actually, when we've been tagging you in posts about this stream today. I'm like, oh, they're both. They're both Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Mr. <laughs> it can be a little uh, confusing sometimes when going back and forth between Twitter and Instagram, just because, yeah, one is spelled out and one is not. But we try. You guys did very good about it. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's actually a focus um, of Dark Horse. Our PR and social media both, we are always very conscientious about making sure that we mention and tag all creators as much as possible because Dark Horse is, of course, um, pretty much everything is creator-owned. Even the licensed works are technically creator-owned as well. So um, always want to make sure that people get credit and are able to see when we're talking about stuff so you can share it, hopefully, if you like. I love seeing these two uh, talkies come together, similar but different. Yeah, these ones are way more similar than the last than the last drawing for sure. Yeah. At least from uh, the angle of the cameras and everything, Actually, like, your shadows are on opposite sides, and I think that is interesting. <laughs> <laughs> You're not left-handed, are you, Michael? I am not, no. No. Then there's no explanation. <laughs> <laughs> it is a mystery. Well, Tyler, you, um, I don't know if you did this intentionally or not, but uh, it's been almost exactly an hour since we began streaming, and you have basically finished both characters in that time um we have been please go ahead (laughs) (laughs) i was just gonna add a little bit of background stuff are we done oh no please go ahead i just want to let you know that we are uh coming up at four and there is no hard stop um i don't want to make you you know draw draw forever so uh we could do one more (laughs) character if you like or we can call it after you finish your your talkies either way I actually have to run um, shortly, so I don't. Ha- I don't think I'll be able to do another character, but uh, I can okay. hang up for a little bit longer for sure. Sure. Yeah, it's a bit later for you. We're in different time zones. I know. Yeah, it's seven o'clock here. Yeah. Hopefully not. Are you in Toronto? Uh, just outside of Toronto. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. So what's EST here? Well, we actually have drawn a winner in the chat. Uh, we'll announce that right now. Um, so Road Sodas, it looks like, is the handle of the winner. And you have won a copy of Black Hammer Library Edition Volume 1, as well as a copy of the beautiful hardcover Hammer of Justice, Black Hammer Justice League crossover, which is gorgeous. Ooh and has like 20 plus different uh, variant covers in here too, including the one by Tyler. Yeah, that series, I mean, there are always so many great variant covers for all the Black Hammer single issues, but this one, man, you, we had all the DC artists as well, so there are so many great covers. Michael, have you looked at the sketchbook section of this book? I have, yeah. It it turned out really, really well. I'm super happy with it. I got to put in a bunch of my process work and um, kind of describe uh, the way that me and Jeff came up with uh, some of the pages and some of the layouts and designs and stuff. So, yeah, it was it was a really fun to put that hardcover together. I think it's a great package. Yeah, it looks gorgeous. Beautifully. Actually, that's another thing I would love to ask you both. Uh, what has it been like working with Jeff on these books? Uh, what kind of process do you have with him? Well, that, for me, it's been really, um, just been really sort of hands off. Like, uh, 
you know, we've obviously talked about stuff, but um, there hasn't been a whole lot of, you know, I'll send in sketches of stuff and I'm like, this is what I'm thinking. And inevitably, all I've ever really gotten is a looks great. (laughs) <laughs> sort of thing. He's you know he's one of those writers um, who gives you like just enough to let you tell the story. You know, mm-hmm. I think I think he's really good in that way. Yeah, I I, I really like that about working with him. Sometimes um, when I get a script, I feel like there's almost too much information on the page, and I have to parse out what I'm going to be able to fit uh, and what I can kind of leave in the script or. And with Jeff, he has such a great um, visual knowledge of how to compose a page that he knows exactly how much to tell his artists. Uh, and I think that also comes from him as being an artist as well as a writer. That makes perfect sense. I, he's very um, succinct in all of his communications, which I very much appreciate. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we had actually asked if he could join us today, too, but unfortunately he is traveling today. Um, But hopefully he will watch this later, and he's very supportive of everything we've been doing this week, um, talking up Black Hammer and all the books in general. Actually, Michael and Tyler, if you don't mind um, sharing photos maybe of your artwork from today on your own social media, I know that people would love to see it there, and Dark Horse can definitely share your posts. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, for sure. Do like a real scan. Ooh, fancy. <laughs> yeah, people. We've we've definitely had a lot of folks watching along at home. So I hope you have been enjoying this art process session with Michael Walsh and Tyler Crook. Um, we get to see Tyler with his watercolor skills here today too, which is super cool. Michael, how much ink do you think you go through in, like, a week? (laughs) Uh, It depends on what I'm drawing, actually. Uh, The project that I'm drawing right now is actually pretty ink-heavy, but I have just piles and piles of extra ink laying around. Um, So, I don't know. I usually I go through, like, maybe half of one of these. I like using this Rapidograph Black India drawing ink. Um, so maybe like half of one of these in a week if I'm inking it all week. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I I like getting inky and messy and dirty uh, <laughs> with, with that part of the process. Um, I think that if I when I try and draw clean or when I'm aiming for kind of more clean art, uh, it makes like the OCD in my head go crazy because it it, I'm never going to be able to do that. I'm not that kind of an artist. I'm, I'm kind of klutzy and messy and I'm always creating happy mistakes with the way that I draw. Um, so I've long, long accepted that my art is going to be a little bit messy, but hopefully in an energetic and fun way. Absolutely. I think it, it works great. <laughs> Thank hey, you. Yes, yesterday when we were doing the, uh, the little video test, I was watching you use your fingerprint stuff and really appreciated watching that. Oh, thanks. Yeah, that was fun. Yeah, My stuff, uh, I can't. Go ahead. On, Tyler. I was just going to say, like, I my stuff can kind of look messy, but I have to be very, very careful about uh, because I'm doing color. Like, I can't do hardly any cleanup in Photoshop. Um, right. So I have to be very careful about keeping my hands clean and stuff. I usually work with a glove. Oh, yeah, so I, I saw. So I don't leave fingerprints. I have my little like, <laughs> yes. cotton glove that I use to hold my page. Oh, man. If you saw how messy my pages were, there's just marks everywhere. And then I clean it all up in Photoshop once I scan it. Because I do all, I do all my coloring digitally. Yeah, I think that makes for beautiful pages. Like, I love seeing originals that are all just bonkers. Like yeah, that. I'll have to see. Uh, what do I have here from Black Hammer? Yeah, see, so even on this one here, I've got the cover for the fifth issue of Black Hammer 
Oh, and, wow. Uh, all of the... <laughs> These four figures on it, I wasn't happy with in the original drawing, so I drew them on a separate piece of paper and then just taped it on and scanned it. <laughs> but lots of my pages have paste-ons like that, and they're pretty messy and crazy. That's I, awesome. I am not an artist, but that, that sounds like basically how I would probably end up doing it, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> on a lot of my BPRD pages when I was doing just the black and white line art, I would use those uh, Avery label papers, like the eight and a half by 11 sheet that's just a sticker. And I would cut out a little patch and just stick it down over the top of my bad drawing and redraw it. It's very handy. <laughs> <laughs> so you both uh, scan in your art at home and send in those digital files, right? That's That's how you submit your pages to us? Yeah. I did yeah. um, my first full color book, the uh, Bad Blood book. I would mail them in, mm -hmm. FedEx them. That was nice. It felt like uh, like how the old guys used to do it back in yeah. the day. I really only ask because we do actually still have a few artists who do that. Mm -hmm. uh, one of them, at times at least, has been uh, Frank Miller and. Uh, I remember some of our digital art texts talking about how when we received his ink heavy, incredibly heavy art <laughs> in the mail, uh, it would it was so inky it would kind of gum up our scanners, and would have to clean. <laughs> <laughs> I have definitely um, scanning stuff at home. I've definitely put like wet ink into my scanner because I was in a rush. And that's always a nightmare. <laughs> so then have to try to clean up. Yeah, I'm trying to sh I'm trying to show this here without spoiling the bottom half of this page because it's near the end of the book. <laughs> but uh, if you can, there's just white out literally everywhere all over this one, um, just to make textures and like for that kind of textural stuff. There, I used uh, denim. Like I've just got a cut like a patch that I cut out of out of uh, some jeans of mine, and I just uh, paint right on top of it like it's a stamp and then stamp it right on top. What kind of uh, whiteout do you use? Uh, I use this uh, Deleter White 2. Okay. It's incredibly opaque and uh, and it's still pretty smooth. I just mix in a little bit of water and shake it up and I can use that almost just like it's a white ink and it goes completely uh, opaque over top. That's awesome. That's so cool. It's mixed media comic art. I like how uh, David Mack does some of his covers where he'll have, you know, like a coffee stain or s blood even one time, I guess. Um, <laughs> he, just, he just went with it and worked it into the final art piece. Yeah, there's a lot of pages that I have that have coffee stains around the outside. <laughs> Well, I don't want to keep you guys too long, but this is really cool. Thank you so much for showing off how you work and talking about your tools, as well as just talking about Black Hammer with us today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having us. Yeah, that was really fun. Uh, and absolutely, I know people would love to see these, like I said, online later. So please do uh, share if you're comfortable with uh, Sharon photos on your social media later, later on, and we'll be sure to pass that on as well and retweet, et cetera. Um, For sure. I will wrap us up here. Um, we did draw a winner in our giveaway, so look in the chat for that, and we'll whisper you here on Twitch afterwards as well. If we don't hear from you first, you have won Black Hammer Library Edition Volume 1, which is super cool. It's a gorgeous book, and also the gorgeous hardcover of Hammer of Justice, the Black Hammer Justice League crossover. Um, and anything else, Black Hammer, you can find now at comic shops and bookstores. Uh, look to comicshoplocator.com and indiebound.org to see which shops are near you and which ones are offering things like curbside pickup right now. Um, of course, also available through the usual outlets like amazon.com. Um, but if you can support your local business, we highly encourage that of course thank you everyone for following along with us at home and uh please stay home and stay safe and uh 
We'll see you next week as we continue to bring you more fun uh, live content with creators like Tyler Crook and Michael Walsh. Thank you again and have a great afternoon, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.